specific here. And these signs are either specific signs, specific signs mean because of the uh, mechanical interference at the level. And at that level, there are certain pathological changes which are seen. They are called as specific signs. And when we'll discuss each pathological cause, that interference at which level, then we'll discuss these specific signs in detail. Then there are non-specific asphyxial findings which appear in each asphyxial death. So we'll discuss those changes in detail in this lecture. Now, the path pathology of asphyxia. Pathology means what altered histology appears as a result of asphyxia. And these are actually the histological changes in the tissues associated with lowering oxygen concentration. The nerve cells, venule the capillaries, they are very susceptible to anoxia or lack of oxygen. So that means they are first going to observe that insert. So the nerve cells, they die immediately and the small blood vessels, they respond by dilatation and they dilate in and try to event increase blood flow to overcome that hypoxia. And this precipitate the stasis of blood in the venules and the capillaries. Here, hence, here by further reducing the circulation. And this capillovenous engorgement, that is because of dilatation of the small blood vessels with rise in the level of circulating carbon dioxide produces congestion and cyanosis. So capillovenous engorgement, which is evident as a sign of congestion and cyanosis is in the resultant to dilatation of the small blood vessel because of anoxia or hypoxia. Then the anoxia increases permeability of the capillary walls, which forces fluid to come out of the cells into the tissue spaces. And this translation of plasma into the tissue spaces cause edema of the tissues. Tissues become edematous, swollen because of increased extracellular blood, extracellular volume of fluids. Then the capillaries eventually rupture because of congestion, because of uh, dilatation, and the blood leaks as it appears at small size hemorrhages. And these hemorrhages are small pinpoint to pinhead size hemorrhages, and they are called as petechial hemorrhages. So capillary endo endothelium, because of anoxia and hypoxia, it releases fibrinolysin. And because of this fibrinolysin, the blood remains in fluid form in asphyxial death. This is important. Commonly asked, what is the cause of fluidity of blood in asphyxial death? This is because of release of endothelium from the release of fibrinolysin from the endothelial walls of the small blood vessels. Then what are the causes of asphyxia? There are two main causes. That means two main systems are responsible. The interference may be at any level, but the main causes are either there is respiratory obstruction or there is circulatory arrest. So these are two main causes which lead to asphyxia. And in both these types, there is decrease in oxygen concentration and rise in carbon dioxide level. And at autopsy, the analysis of blood will clearly differentiate whether the circulatory arrest or the respiratory failure, that is the cause of death. In 
if the concentration of oxygen is more than 25 millimeter of mercury, then the circulatory failure is the cause. And if it is less than 25 millimeter of mercury, then the respiratory obstruction may be the probable cause. So blood level concentration of oxygen at autopsy and postmortem examination will differentiate between the circulatory arrest or respiratory arrest. And usually the circulatory arrest precedes cessation of breathing. And there is a vicious vis cycle. This is the diagrammatic representation of vicious cycle of hypoxia. Initially, there is on anoxia or hypoxia, which lead to capillary edema, particular hemorrhages, and that further reduces the volume of the blood. And there is reduced blood supply, stasis, edema, congestion, and particular hemorrhages. Now, what are the signs of asphyxia? That means this altered histology, that is the pathology, is evident as signs of asphyxia. These, the signs of asphyxia are due to pathological changes resulting from anoxia. As a result, body tissues undergo parenchymatous degeneration. And these signs of asphyxia are either specific, which are present at the locus, that is at the point of interference of respiration, and they are specific to the type of interference. So we'll discuss in detail these specific signs when we will discuss the level of interference. Then non-specific, they are cyanosis, congestion, increased permeability leading to edema, particular hemorrhages, and fluidity of blood. So these are non-specific asphyxial findings, which almost appear in all asphyxial deaths. And these are non-specific. So these non-specific signs are developed when the obstruction to the breathing is maintained for about 30 seconds. That whenever there is interference with the process of respiration longer than 30 seconds, these non-specific changes will appear. These non-specific findings are more marked if the agonal period is prolonged. That means there is, if there is partial obstruction that some process of respiration is going on and there is partial obstruction, then the agonal period is prolonged and these non-specific findings will be more deeply developed. So they also more marked if the obstruction is incomplete. The ex examination of these findings should be in good light when then they will be evident more easily. So first non-specific sign is cyanosis. And as we know, this is due to reduced oxygen level in the blood and increased uh, carbon dioxide level. And this lead to rise in reduced hemoglobin concentration. So rise in carbon dioxide level, reduced oxygen will lead to reduced hemoglobin. And this becomes apparent when at least five grams of reduced hemoglobin is present. And blood appear purple or dark colored. Then cyanosis can be seen in the skin and in those organs where the venous and the capillary blood flow is abundant, like lungs, meninges, liver, spleen, and kidney. Diminished oxygen tension results in capillary dilatation and stasis. The venous return to the heart is diminished. Pulmonary blood flow is reduced, resulting in further deficient oxygenation. 
So this is a picture showing the nails, which are cyanotic, cyanose nails. And tips of the finger, they are cyanosed. The limitation of this uh, finding cyanosis is that due to postmortem oxidative process, there is diffusion of oxygen from the surrounding tissues and after 24 hours, the cyanosis may not be present. So the examination of the body should be as soon as possible because delay in the examination will lose this finding. And there may be absence of cyanosis in astrictal death in cold weather also because extreme low temperature interfere with the process of metabolism at cellular level and the oxygen is there but it is not utilized and the postmortem staining appears pink color hypostasis. The perception of cyanosis depends upon the amount of blood in the circulation. Then increased permeability. Second sign, increased permeability due to anoxia, the cementum substance between the endothelial cells is damaged and the fluid transudates into the tissue spaces. And excess fluid will be found in serosal cavities, pericardium and pleural cavities. Pulmonary edema develops rapidly. So the limitation of this edema that blood may be redistributed due to gravity and rigor mortis. Dilatation of the heart and pulmonary edema is common in many other diseases. In many asphyxial death, this sign may be present. Then congestion. Due to anoxia and reduced return of the blood to the heart, there is pooling and stasis of blood in the vessels. And they appear dilated and prominent. And this can be manifested in serous linings, conjunctiva and the abdominal viscera, particularly. Then fluidity of the blood. In almost all asphyxial death, the blood remains in fluid form and this is known as fluidity of blood. And it depends upon the rapidity of death, that how rapid the process of interference is, that there should be sufficient time to release fibrinolysin from the endothelial walls. And this fluidity of blood that blood remains in fluid form in asphyxial death is due to release of fibrinolysin from the endothelial lining of the blood vessels because of anoxia. Then pulmonary edema. The pulmonary edema is the common finding in many modes of death. In asphyxial death, the pulmonary edema is more marked. And this is an important instruction that every lung each lung should be weighed to assess the degree, degree of pulmonary edema. And it, it should be compared with the, with the normal weight of the lung. Now the petechial hemorrhages. These are also important signs of asphyxia, which are non-specific signs. They are also called as tardew spots. Petechial hemorrhages are tardew spots. They are small, about pinpoint to pinhead size hemorrhages which are seen on the less supported walls in the skin and the serosal surfaces. The, these small blood vessels are capillaries, they rupture due to anoxia, stasis and increase perme capillary permeability and rise in intracapillary pressure due to occlusion, due to dilatation and in increase in flux of blood. So these spots are usually around round, dark colored and well-defined. They are generally for, found in those parts where the capillaries are least supported, like face, conjunctiva, epiglottis, serosal surfaces of the heart, lung, meninges, and thymus and other internal organs.
So in this picture, you can see the particular hemorrhages on the face. It's another picture. And they are also showing the particular hemorrhages on the face. Then this is on the inner surface of the lip and the gums. And in the conjunctiva, if it is abundant, they may appear as subconjunctival hemorrhages. This is on the uh, lung, you can see the particular hemorrhages. And this is on the heart surface. So these particular hemorrhages are more pronounced in those areas where intracapillary pressure rises rapidly above the level of the neck in strangulation because of obstruction is at the level of neck and above the level that is on the face and the eyes, it will be more marked. And in chest in stampede, when there is traumatic asphyxia, the chest is compressed in stampede and unable to move then above the line of demarcation, which is an important sign, point of compression, the particular hemorrhage will be marked. They are better seen in fear colored persons and immediately after death, they are more easily visible. So fresh examination as soon as possible should be done. And they disappear when the putrefaction sets in. So the limitation of these particular hemorrhages, they also are observed in other deaths in which there are convulsions or acute cardiac attack or some bleeding disorders. They may also appear in these conditions. But other findings in asphyxial death can distinct that these particular hemorrhages are because of the asphyxia. <clears throat> so the tardive spots does not exclude death from asphyxia. They may appear in other, but other signs will distinct having the finding of violent asphyxial deaths. They are rarely present in drowning because in drowning, if it is the, uh, the water is flowing, the body is constantly rolling and changing its position and they may not be uh, time to develop hypostasis or the time to develop the particular hemorrhages. So the summary of this lecture that in this video lecture, we have learned the pathological changes as a result of asphyxia. What were the, what were the causes of asphyxia and signs of asphyxia, the specific signs and the non-specific signs. Thank you very much. Take care and Allah bless.